Maybe it's because of all those photos of Yoda with Miss Piggy and Kermit that people think that Yoda was built by the Muppets. But I'm here to tell you, that's a complete fallacy. I was there when we made Yoda, and uh, I can tell you who made him, and I can tell you exactly how the Muppets were involved. A lot of people think that Yoda was built by the Muppet, by Jim Henson. And although Jim and Frank did come in in the early days to talk about how the puppet might be put together, it was my old boss, Stuart Freeborn, who's this gentleman in the glasses there, who was a mastermind of character effects at that time. So the mastermind behind Yoda was Stuart Freeborn, and I had joined his team uh, when we were building creatures for the Moss Eisley Cantina on A New Hope. After that movie, we went on to a couple of other projects, and by the time I came back to Empire Strikes Back, I was one of the senior techs in the workshop building the Wampa and the Tonton and other characters that were there. It was my job to make the mold skins for Yoda. That's all I thought I was going to do when we, when we started on Empire Strikes Back. And another time I'll tell you more about how that developed. But the people who were uh, core to that team on Empire Strikes Back was Stuart himself, who was the old man of creature effects. And it was his ideas of animatronics that we were trying to see through. Uh, his son Graham, who was an unsung hero that I often talk about because he's completely underrated and, uh, and really very badly recorded by Lucasfilm and myself I was number three on that team and then we had three uh, juniors that were little trainees that were working with us. When it came to Yoda there were a number of specialists that we evolved uh, to do specific things on the four different versions that we needed in order to make Yoda do everything he wanted him to do in Empire Strikes Back and I'll tell you about all of them at some point in another video. If you want to be sure you don't miss that you really should subscribe by clicking the little ghostly icon down in the corner there um, otherwise as Yoda would say miss a lot you will. But today, I really want to focus on the contribution that was made specifically by the Muppets. That's how the Muppets got involved too. The, the union rule was that puppets, if there wasn't a puppeteer, had to be operated by the props department. But the props department were also supposed to build the puppets. We were another department, we built a very delicate puppet and we were worried that the props would break it just to show that they should have built it in the first place. And so um, it was suggested that maybe we should bring in a puppeteer and the Muppets were doing the Muppet show 15 minutes away in another studio. That's how come they got asked to come and do it. A critical member of our crew was Wendy Midner, known as Wendy Midner Froud or Wendy Froud, because she married Brian Froud, who was the um, designer behind Dark Crystal and those Henson movies. Wendy was a puppet fabricator for the Muppets, and she came and joined our team as a liaison. So she knew how to make Miss Piggy and how to make uh, these things. And she was there, supposedly, to make the bodies and to do other things that were going to make a puppet that was going to be acceptable to Frank when he finally came back. Uh, you can see uh, Wendy working um, on characters for Henson there. I haven't seen Wendy for many years, but she was really a lovely person. Great to work with, very knowledgeable about uh, how to fabricate puppets. And she left the Muppets for a period of months to come and join our team at Elstree Studios. Stuart was sculpting the Yoda head, and he was working from the drawings that Joe Johnson had done that I talked about in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, when this is finished, you might want to uh, link to that. You can click the little insignia up here, and it will take you directly to that. When they saw exactly how that sculpt looked, um, how that had transposed into three dimensions, they really didn't feel that it was very friendly and they certainly didn't feel that it was very wise. And they kept on coming in and having a discussion, George and Gary Kurtz and Stuart, and they'd go away uh, and come back maybe eight or ten days later, have another discussion. Stuart would keep sculpting and changing and sculpting and changing and months went by. 
Now all this time, I was waiting to make the mold so I could make the foam skins. And Wendy was waiting to make the bodies. You know, she needed the head to get the sense of perspective um, in order to do that. And while she was waiting, she sculpted the hands and she sculpted the feet and I made those in foam latex. Later on, she would make three or four different bodies. And those bodies were made out of sheep foam, which she curved and cut and glued uh, to make those bodies. She made the arms and the legs and the puppet linkages in the elbows to be able to you know make them move as the puppeteers uh, moved Yoda's hands around um, but month and we didn't feel like we were really progressing and people were getting desperate Wendy was a charming person and while she was waiting for Stuart to finally get everything put together she put together her own version of what she thought Yoda might look like. And so this we could call the Muppet Yoda. Uh, and the photographs of this have been seen you know, all over the place. It was the first Yoda to be put together because Wendy was used to making something really quick. Actually, this looks more like one of those guys that was uh, in the theater um, on the Muppets, you know, the two old guys. I don't remember the names of them, but I think, I think there's some of them in there too. And this puppet version actually became quite influential along the way. People were really amused by the foam Muppet Yoda that Wendy had made, and that became really influential because uh, people started to change their opinion of what Yoda ought to be. And while Stuart was sculpting his own version, uh, Wendy then set about sculpting a, a version that was based on that uh, Muppet Yoda that she had made. Now, that was never used, uh, and it didn't have the age that uh, Yoda eventually had, but it became very influential. And it wasn't until the last two weeks of uh, the, the sculpting period that Stuart took the fun sense from what Wendy had done and added the white hair and smiling eyes of Albert Einstein and the lumps and bumps of his own jaw uh, that he, we created the Yoda that you all know and love. <laughs> but another time had passed and People in the production and in the team were getting anxious. The whole movie, you know, hinged on whether Yoda was going to work or it wasn't. Before Yoda, there were no puppets that had sophisticated eye and ear mechanisms capable of subtle changes of expression. They were Muppets. They were Miss Piggy, which was fun, but the eyes didn't move. The only thing that moved really was the mouth. And they were also largely cartoon characters. You know, Yoda could look up, he could look down, he could look left and right. The lie lids opened and closed, the ears moved up and down. And and in and out. The eyebrows could frown and the neck, you know, moved and of course the jaw moved and the, and the mouse moved too. And so we were really trying to do something that hadn't been done before. We were trying to make the world's first animatronic superstar. If you're a younger viewer, you maybe won't know that no one had ever done this before. We were trying to make a puppet, a major character in a big budget feature film. And people were worried about whether we could make that work. We didn't want it to look like Miss Piggy or, or Kermit. We wanted it to be a character that people could believe in. And to do that, we needed a, a much more sophisticated mechanism. And here we were getting closer and closer to the shooting date. And we hadn't even got a prototype up and running. And so people were getting very, very nervous. I mean, you've seen the movie, so you know ultimately that we fixed the problem. Details on exactly how we did that, I'm going to tell you in yet another video at a later date. And yes, you've got to subscribe, otherwise you're going to miss it. But this video is about the Muppets, and having told you about Wendy's involvement, the next major element that really they excelled at was the performance itself. Now, who better to talk to about that than one of the puppeteers from Return of the Jedi, Mike Quinn, uh, who I had a conversation with a little while ago. So uh, let's cut into that conversation. It was the way the puppeteers I built stuff after that that was much more complicated. Nothing, mm. you know, with motors and various other things ever finally looks as good as if you can get back to a puppeteer moving his muscles. You get a nuance right. that comes from the humanity of the puppeteer. And, and uh, you know, Yoda could have been, you know, a... 
uh, yeah. type puppet. But he wasn't. I know that Frank looked at the first day's filming and scrapped it all and started mm. again, laid it all down. But it was his humanity and his the way he filmed it and the way that Kirsch allowed him to, you know, to bring that as a real character rather than as yeah. a puppet. Exactly. It wasn't a puppet. It was it was just a character. And uh, the, the beautiful filming of it and the wonderful performance of the genius of Frank Oz. It was everything came together at the right time. Again, the right people in the right places at the right time. Sort of against all odds in a way, somehow created this uh, this character that we all were mesmerized by on screen. But I was just obsessing. It's like, what is this Yoda going to be like? How is he going to move? We haven't seen anything like that before. Collaboration there, though, in the background. Although uh, Yoda wasn't built by Henson or the Muppets, collaboration going yeah. on and a preparation really for Dark Crystal. Yeah, and so, Frank's performance, you know, Frank uh, making it not Muppety, but making it real, you know, isolating all the different movements in his hands so that you would believe, you know, and getting a realistic walk instead of a Muppet bounce. Um, so Frank gonna... was part of that, yeah. And of course, what is that? 35 years span of Frank and Mike. As, as I was in the Yoda hole in uh, Return of the Jedi there. And then, of course, that's uh, with Frank, uh, the uh, premiere of uh, The Last Jedi. So. Good old Frank. I showed him that picture of us two, and he said, who are those two young kids back there? He, he feels pretty funny. <laughs> Good old Frank, I love him. I'm gonna wrap this up in just a moment, but before I do, uh, I'd like to point out that if you're enjoying our videos, there's a lot more for you to see. If you just click on the little eye up in the corner here, uh, that's gonna open up a list of some of our videos that you might wanna watch. And if you really enjoy it, well, maybe you'd like to consider joining our Patreon group. These are our insiders who get inside information about all the videos that are coming up, and they're really like our inner family. So if you'd like to join that, the link is down below here. So let's continue uh, with uh, the final words from puppeteer and character performer, Mike Quinn. What you guys all did totally opened the, the, the gate for the Dark Crystal. It, yeah, we probably couldn't have done the Dark Crystal maybe had we not had Yoda in, in Empire Strikes Back. I do want to pay tribute to, to you to you and your team though from uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back because what you guys did was pretty much the first puppet animatronic uh, ever. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell or you may miss our next video about making Star Wars and practical creature effects told by people who were actually there.